Hi, it's Stacy here at Tamarack Nature Center, part of Ramsey County Parks and Rec. Well, you saw Shannon had a lot of fun activities and games from sticks and stones and other loose parts with a little bit of a historical twist or a twist from other places around the country and the world. Well, I've got some other things that you can do with sticks and stones and other loose parts. So I bet where you live, you might have some things that you could raid the recycling bin or go outside and find some things like sticks or twigs, like caps from milk jugs or lemonade or juice jugs. Maybe like some, maybe you have some plastic figurines you can borrow. Maybe you have some old popsicle sticks or tongue depressors and some string or yarn. Well, these are just a few of the items that we can use that we've used today to show you some more fun things to do to keep you busy this summer. First up, there's a game I used to play as a kid called pick up sticks. Have any of you heard of that? Well, it's pretty simple. It's like it sounds. You have a bunch of sticks. These are real sticks that had fallen on the ground and were dry and dead and I had permission to collect them. So make sure if you're going to gather things like sticks or acorns or little pine cones that you get permission from wherever you are. Maybe it's a neighbor's house. Um, maybe it's your own yard, but ask a grown-up that it's okay to take them. Well, we have a whole bunch of sticks here. We let, made sure they were dry and painted them. And they don't have to be different colors. They can just be natural. And then what you do, you want to have one stick that's different color. This is kind of the superpower stick, I call it. It's a black stick. This will have superpowers later on. So you're going to get those sticks and you're going to get them and then you're going to let them fall in kind of a jumbled pile. Then what you do is find another person to play with you, or you can practice yourself, and you're gonna try to pick up as many sticks as you can in a row without wiggling another one. So you gotta be honest here. So I'm gonna look for one that's not touching too many others and try to lift it off. If I can remove one stick without jiggling or moving another one, I get to go again. I'm gonna try this one over here. Oh, my yellow one moved, so I gotta put it back. Okay, now it's the next person turn. Now let's say that that person goes and they end up, they get the red stick. Then they get the superpower black stick. Oh, it really moved. You can use this as a lifter to help lift one off of another but it's the only stick that works that way. And then you get to go again. And then once the game is over, once all the sticks are picked up, and then you count how many sticks each person got, whoever got the most is the winner. It's kind of a fun game. And it's not hard to find objects. You can even use a whole bunch of straws or old chopsticks from a restaurant and then just color one of them with marker or something. So pick up sticks. Another is, I bet you've been eating some popsicles lately. I know I have at home. Well, save a couple of the popsicle sticks, two or three, and see if you have any yarn sitting around at home um, or uh, thread, colored thread, and you can wind around and weave and make a special design. Some people like to weave uh, like this and then add a head and a tail. What does it look like to you? A turtle. You can make a turtle. You can make uh, it with three sticks that you glue together and then it's kind of like a sunburst. You decide. But plain old popsicle sticks sitting around would probably even work with chopsticks too. And some leftover yarn, kind of a fun design. You can hang it up in a window or even maybe use it as a coaster. All right, how about anybody have um, milk caps sitting around at home or maybe um, the lids from the top of a peanut butter or jelly jar get a bunch of them maybe eight or more or maybe you have wood cookies these are wood cookies that we have 
flip them over and on one side make designs. Make pairs of a design and then it's going to be a memory game. How's your memory doing? Mine gets a little fuzzy when I haven't had enough to drink. So you can do a memory game, you know how this goes, and try to make a match. Once you get your match, put it in your pile. So you can turn everyday items like these caps that aren't all that easily recycled, turn it into a game. All right, we've got tic-tac-toe. You can use chalk, play on a sidewalk, no problem, or you can use some found objects like get a whole bunch of pine cones from your yard or neighbor's yard and a whole bunch of acorns or acorn caps or you can use those caps again and take turns with somebody else and try to play tic-tac-toe pretty easy pretty fun all right so if you have some rocks sitting around they don't just have to be boring old rocks if they're around your house or your apartment building or your townhouse, ask permission before you remove them because sometimes they have a special job like keeping the, the mud and the rain from splashing up against the place. But if you have some plain rocks, they can be pretty fun to paint and design and make a pet rock. Here's some cute turtles some of our staff have made or you can paint them. I painted some earlier this spring and I painted them all birds and then we hit them and then you can go on a, a rock hunt. So decorate some rocks. I saw somebody online that painted some that looked like chubby little hamsters and mice and hid them at the bottom of trees peeking out of holes like out of a troll door and then you could leave them out for people. Or just write, draw designs like rainbows Anybody here like checkers? Well, it's not hard to either draw your own checkerboard or look up a graphic on the computer, print it out, and put it in a page protector or laminate it. Then find somebody to play checkers with. If you don't have a checker set, that's okay. Guess what? You can use good old milk caps or I found a whole bunch of rocks. And I got a special kind of paint called acrylics, which really is a fancy word for not going to wash off. So you can line up and play a mean game of checkers. Have to let you know that the rocks, it's really hard to get them to be kinged or queened. So it's going to be a simpler game where you just line up and just try to get to the other side before your opponent. So, rock or acorn cap checkers. Now, speaking of rocks, there's a challenge you can do with rocks. You can try to build the tallest rock tower or cairn that you can without it falling over. And there's some pretty amazing videos online of different people who have really researched and tried to figure out the balance points of these rocks and made some interesting towers and sculptures. It can be harder than it looks and harder than you think. So you can make an animal rock tower. And some people, some cultures, um, they uh, will mark certain trails along the trails with rock towers or rock pillars or cairns. Now, anybody have a neighborhood or a yard or a park that happens to have lots of fallen sticks, old leaves from last fall, and maybe you have one of your favorite little toys or figurines? Well, guess what? If you bring your imagination, do you have a good imagination? You can make a home or hideout. Make a fort for one of these animals. Find a good spot. Layer up some sticks, maybe some yarn, maybe some dry grasses. See if you can make a home or a hideout. Big stick forts that you can fit in are way fun too, but not everybody has a huge place with lots and lots of sticks and branches that you're going to see and have access to. So, but you can make a cool little hideout and then play. Well, these were just a few ideas of things that you can do 
with simple objects like sticks, stones, and other loose parts that you have that maybe you didn't find as interesting until now. Coming up soon, keep your eyes peeled because later on, part of Discovery Hollow, the Logs and Hollows, will be open for you to come do your own creating and exploring, but at a safe distance. Take care. Bye-bye.